Hi everyone, this is the first class of the Feng Shui series. So before I start the topics in Feng Shui, I have a few comments uh, about uh, this, the, 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 uh, this series, this Feng Shui series. So firstly, uh, there will be uh, many technical details involved uh, in the class. And, but don't worry about that. Uh, there will be a little bit information overwhelming if you don't have uh, much knowledge in, uh, in the I Ching or some other metaphysics. Uh, but if you follow me step by step, uh, it won't be hard. Okay. So secondly, I will teach Feng Shui from a practitioner's view. So, uh, because I am a feng shui practitioner, so there are some knowledge in feng shui uh, th that is important, but uh, it would be very hard for you to implement. Uh, then, for that part, I will just go through very quickly. Uh, if you understand, then good. If you don't, don't worry about it. My major purpose of the the class is for you to be able to apply feng shui. Uh, just by yourself. Okay. So third, uh, in this class, I will uh, classify many, clarify many feng shui uh, misconceptions because there are many feng shui misconceptions. Uh, I will try to uh, do that, uh, but that's my only my personal opinion because I figure out those some of the uh, the the feng shui. Uh, theories or feng shui rules are contradicted with uh, physics or common sense, then I, I don't think that's right. So I will uh, show you why and if you, 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 you determine if you agree with me or not. Okay. So fourth, I, so in the feng shui class there, there will be some uh, astrology and physiognomy involved, it, involved in it. Uh, again, that won't uh, that won't prevent you from understanding feng shui. Uh, if you don't, if you don't don't understand those astrology and physiognomy part, don't worry about it. Uh, I will uh, teach those in the uh, later uh, series. Uh, and first, so in, as you know, feng shui comes from China. And so there, there, there are many uh, uh, terminologies, you know, those professional terms in feng shui that are from uh, from Chinese. Uh, so that so the the, the 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 terminology itself probably makes no sense to you. So what I will do is I will I will tell you what, what what's what's the 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 Chinese counterparts like what's the they will show you the Chinese characters and try to explain to you what that means in, in English uh, if, if those, those concepts have, are, are very important in Feng Shui. If they are not important, then I will just go through that quickly. Okay, uh, I think that's, that's it. Okay, then I will start the, the topics in Feng Shui. So first, what is Feng Shui? Okay. So generally speaking, Feng Shui is the uh, it's the study of the environment, it's the analysis of the environment and the analysis of the impact of the environment to the human being. Uh, well, in technical terms, feng shui is the analysis of the qi and the qi profile. What's my pen? It's the qi. It's the qi. Pronounce it as qi. And uh, that would be qi in Chinese character, but actually it would be this. There's another character, qi. Okay. Um, so what what is qi? I will, I will discuss a little bit more detail later about what qi is. But in generally speaking, uh, you can think of qi as oxygen. Okay, and this is not right, but you can think of qi as the oxygen. It's something that can, that, that is required for human being to live. Okay, 
and the qi profile. Obviously, oxygen is involved in qi, but uh, the qi, prof qi profile is, is what feng shui is analyzing about. Okay, so that's in technical terms. What is feng shui? Okay, uh, what is not feng shui? Um, and I will talk a little bit more about this because this is a, this this what is not feng shui is actually important uh, because there are many misconceptions about feng shui. So first, the placement of the good luck objects is not feng shui. Okay, you don't decorate your house with those little uh, metal animals or or whatever. Uh, I would say crystals or little stones. Uh, okay, this is not feng shui because in feng shui, what is important is to uh, create certain feng shui structure. This is important. Okay, create feng shui. You can call it feng shui structure, or create certain feng shui configuration. This is important, not not those little good luck objects, okay? And uh, uh, so how to create those feng shui structure and configuration? It involves uh, mathematical calculations and involve the placement of water or water plant sometimes, okay? And uh, yeah, so water is water. Is what is really important in feng shui, okay? And uh, yeah, feng shui is not placement of good luck object. And by the same token, feng shui is not about uh, wishful thinking or auspicious saying like well, Happy New Year, not feng shui. Like, Happy Chinese New Year, obviously not feng shui as well. Okay. Uh, also, feng shui is not about uh, the displaying. Displacement, displacement of art. Okay, no, this is not feng shui. Also, lucky number. Say the uh, car number, the the your cell phone number, your the door number. This this is this is not part of feng shui. Okay, and also any spiritual practice. It's not feng shui. Okay, feng shui. The feng shui doesn't have any spiritual practice. And also religion. Religion is not part of feng shui. Feng shui has nothing to do with religion, uh, because well, in religion you usually you need to have a belief. Okay, in feng shui there's no belief thing. Okay, so you 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 don't you don't need to believe that feng shui effect exists for the feng shui effect to exist. It's like the 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 apple. The apple will fall to the ground because of the gravitational force. Uh, you don't have to believe that gravitational force is there to make the apple fall fall onto the ground. Okay. Similar with feng shui, you don't have you don't need to believe that for it to happen, because the feng shui effect is uh, universal and 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 physical. Okay. So okay. So schools of feng shui. Uh, I will give a brief description of the schools of feng shui. So there are the oldest, the two oldest school of feng shui is San Yuan, San Yuan, and the San He, the San Yuan feng shui and San He feng shui. Let me write the Chinese character here. San Yuan, San He, and okay. Makes no sense to you. The name is from Chinese. Okay, San Yuan Feng Shui, San Ke Feng Shui, and under San Yuan Feng Shui, there's many sub schools. It's like there are Xuan Kong Feng Shui. Well, if if you don't remember this, it's perfectly fine. It's just for uh, yeah, just some 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 uh background knowledge. Yes, and if you know it, that's good. If you don't know it, that's perfectly okay. Eight Mansion Feng Shui. And uh, some Sun Yuan Dragon Gate, Dragon Gate, 
8 formation. Uh, in, on the sun he feng shui there are sun, sun he water formula. There's a sun he water formula. There is sun he, sun he, let's see that, yeah. There's sun he, um, luan tou, luan tou, sometimes we call that forms. And under Shen Kong Feng Shui, we have Flying Star Feng Shui. Flying Star. And there are uh, uh, the six, 64 hexagram. Hexagram Feng Shui, sometimes in Chinese called Da Gua. And under Eight Mansion Feng Shui, there are uh the uh big wandering star feng shui one wandering yeah what wandering year da yu nian wandering year small wandering year feng shui Obviously, there are there are there are more, uh, but those are the major, major ones, and uh, so in, in in this this class, I will focus on the Shen Kong Feng Shui, and uh, and Eight Mansion Feng Shui, uh, because based on my own my own experience, these two are, uh, it's very easy to apply and uh, fairly accurate. Okay, uh. Yes. Okay, then what do I have? Uh, okay, there are some. Some uh, I actually checked Wikipedia and realized that uh, they divide feng shui into two schools called Kang Form School. The Form School. And Kang Pass School. Kang Pass School. Okay. Obviously, this is the wrong division. Okay. This is the wrong way to uh, categorize feng shui, because in, in, in any types of school, like in Xuan Kong feng shui or eight mansion feng shui, they need to use both form analysis and formula analysis. When the formula analysis, I mean the compass analysis. Okay, so forms and compass are involved in every schools. Okay, so th so the form and compass itself are not feng shui schools. They are actually the analytical tools. I would rather call that the, the way to analyze. The, as I said, feng shui is, the, uh, is, is, feng shui is about analyzing qi and qi profile. Okay? So form analysis and compass analysis are the two ways to analyze qi and qi profile. So they are not feng shui schools. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then I will talk about yin and yang theory. Well, this, is, this is the, the, the basis of, of uh, feng shui and other meta, uh, Chinese metaphysics. But in feng shui, actually, it's, it would be very, very easy to talk about, talk about it. Because yin, the only thing you need to remember is yin means any place or any objects that is uh, inactive, 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 or silent, or the place that is low and flat. Okay, that means the place or or the object is belongs to the in group. So they are the, what we call is they are yin. And uh, for yang group, so the so yin yang actually are is the way how people group things. Okay, they they group object physical objects into two groups. Okay, the yin group and yang group. So yang yang group means that any objects or place 
that is active or contain active active stuff. It's active. It's what we call energetic. Energetic. Sometimes it's noisy. And it's high. Or high. Or protruding. How to protruding. Like, and then, then, then those objects and places belong to the yang group. Okay, that's the only thing you need to know about the yin and the yang. Okay. And let's go to five element theory. So five element theory is what are those five elements? Okay. Uh, there we have metal, uh, wood, uh, earth, water, fire. Okay. The reason I I I write write them this way is because. It will be easy for you to memorize them. You will see. So there are not uh, you not only need to know what are the five elements, but also the relationship between the five elements. There are two basic relationship between those elements. So one is called generate, okay, generate, or help, support. I uh, will say support, generate the support. Mm. The other is called um, destroy or control. Okay, so metal will I will use G here. My general G destroy is D here. Okay. So metal will generate water. Water generate wood. Wood generate fire, fire generate earth, earth generate metal. Okay. Um, also, metal will destroy wood. D. Wood will destroy earth. Earth will destroy water. Water will destroy fire. Fire will destroy metal. Okay, that's the basic two basic relationships between those five elements. You see, you can easy to memorize that by memorizing the the relative uh, relative positions of the the, the elements, and uh, also one thing I need to emphasize here is okay, this water element. Okay, I would rather call it water element. Is different water element is different from water for example okay so uh, water element doesn't just mean mean this this piece of this the, those water okay so we would say water belongs to or is a type of water element okay it belongs to the water element group okay but uh, water element doesn't mean just the water. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, sim similarly, uh, the fire element doesn't equal to just a fire. And a fire is fire belongs to fire element, but fire element is not just just a fire. Okay. This the the five element are the 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 ways are the, the five groups uh, group representation of the of the physical objects it's like in in, 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 in ancient China people don't know this those uh, oxygen they don't know oxygen they don't they don't know hydrogen they they don't know those elements they what they know is okay it's metal water or it's fire wood and that's 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 the way they you know categorize things into five groups Okay, so yeah, that's the five element theory. That's the only thing you need to memorize about the or know about the five elements theory. Okay, Let me remove this. Finally, I will discuss briefly about the relationship between the feng shui and astrology. Okay, 
So, why we need to know something about astrology is because, uh, let's say Feng Shui and Ba Zi astrology, if you recall, Ba Zi astrology in the, in the introduction course. So, Ba Zi astrology will calculate um, which element is your favorite element and which element is not your favorite element. You know. For example, let's say you create a feng shui structure, create a feng shui structure as a, a house. Okay. And this area it has a strong water element. A strong water element. Okay, you create a feng shui structure that is uh, favored for for wealth and health, you know, uh, but let's say for certain area they have strong water element. This is very common. Okay. However, the person who live in this house uh, does uh, this way. However, the uh, the water element is not a favored element for the person who live in this house. Okay. This, so they really the water water element water element element it's just unfavored it's just unfavored unfavored element for the person who who lived in this house okay then even if the feng shui structure is very auspicious the person still cannot spend a long time in this area because this area has strong water element. You see, that's why as a feng shui consultant, they they need to know both astrology and uh, and, and feng shui uh, because the feng shui if the, the feng shui effect will be different on persons with different uh, bots chart. What we call a bots chart. Okay, the effect are different. So, so as a feng shui consultant in their consulting services, they always have to analyze the, the boss chart to make sure there's no uh, conflict between the feng shui structure and, and, and their natal chart. Okay. So also feng shui, there are many uh, terminologies in feng shui originates from uh, purple star astrology. For example, as you will learn, in uh, eighth mansion feng shui, there is this five ghost ghost position, or there is yeah, but or there is life endangering position. In eight dimension feng shui, okay. In eight men, eight dimension feng shui, okay. Uh, the wu gui, Chinese is wu gui wei, wu gui, and the German, and uh, okay. So, uh, this name, this name actually comes from purple star astrology, okay. So, in purple star astrology, there is there's lian zhen. Don't worry about this. You, I, I know this name makes no sense to you, but I'm just trying to let you know that they are related. Okay, Jiaming is like Po Jun, Po Jun star, and Lian Zhen star. So, so they are just purple, purple. So feng, feng shui and uh, and the Chinese astrology are closely related to each other. So uh, uh, if you want to be a really professional uh, uh, feng shui consultant, you 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 you, are, you you need to be a, a master of of astrology as, as well. Okay, just to name a few. Here and okay, that's. That's, that's, I think that's the end of the, the first class. So next class, I will start uh, talking about eight dimension, eight dimension feng shui. And thank you everyone.